Do I need to learn Attic Greek, that is classical Greek, before I learn Koine Greek? Well, in this video, we're going to answer that question. Let's get into it. Hi there, I'm Daryl Burling from Biblical Mastery Academy, and I help people like you with the tools, habits, and systems to learn not only the Greek of the New Testament, but now also the Hebrew of the Old Testament, so you can read the Bible in its original language. And I do this because it really is my heart that you grow in Christ's likeness, and I'm convinced that there's no better way for you to do that than to be able to read the New Testament without the veil, if you like, of, or actually the Old Testament as well, without the veil of a translation. And so that's what I really want to encourage you to do. But sometimes I get comments on this channel from people who suggest that, well, you ask the question, you know, should I learn Attic Greek or Koine, or Koine Greek? Which one of those should I learn first? Or some other people who might say, you've got to learn Attic Greek before you learn Koine Greek, otherwise you're just sort of like pigeonholing yourself, right? And so I wanted to address those concerns, but before I address those, let me just ask you to address the like button down below and hit that if you get value out of this video. With that, what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to introduce you to Ken. There's a good five centuries in between that uh, and New Testament Greek. And so for somebody to come in and say, well, you need to start with Attic is about like saying somebody who wants to learn modern English as a spoken language, well, you need to go back and work on Shakespearean English. Ken is a member of the Greek Mastery membership, but the interest, interesting and important thing about Ken is that prior to starting with the Greek Mastery membership, he was learning Attic Greek. And in fact, he was he's a tutor, tutoring people through Attic Greek. And so why, well, you know, why would he come to a program like you know, master, the Mastery Membership, right? Biblical Mastery Academy, when you've already got Attic Greek. And if you've got Attic Greek, why do you really even need Koine Greek? And on top of that, if you've got Koine Greek and you want to go into Attic Greek, well, what choices do you have there to be able to do that? And so these are some of the questions I talk about with Ken in this video. So let me introduce you to Ken. We'll get into it and uh, you can hear from him there. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for taking the time to have this conversation with me. One of the things from your point of view, you know, in, in terms of Biblical Mastery Academy, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people learn the New Testament, the language of the New Testament, so they can learn the Word of God and, and, and really for the devotional value of that and the study value as well. So you can study the Bible in the original language and so on. Now, you've got history and background in Attic. In fact, you teach Attic Greek. Is that right? It's better to say that I tutor students in Attic Greek. Yeah. Okay. So you came, so you've got some level of fluency in, uh, in Attic Greek. Tell me, I'd love to hear from you just in terms of how, how has that served you? Because uh, you became a member of the Greek Mastery Membership. T tell me how that served you up to this point and why you joined. That'd be really helpful. Sure. Um, so what Attic Greek, uh, you know, is, is, is very helpful background for, uh, I feel like the um, there are some concepts that are are, are covered in uh, our biblical Greek grammars that are they don't go into in very many in, in very much detail. And when I um, uh, so having that background is really rich and valuable. Um, but that said, I've, I come at it from kind of a little bit of a narrow perspective in that sense, because my focus has mostly been on classical Greek literature. And um, there is such a rich um, scholarly community amongst the biblical Greek uh, uh, folks that are, are, are doing that teaching, doing that learning, especially with your program. And so um, joining that, I, you know, I, I was already into the New Testament. I was already uh, doing some reading with a reader, uh, but I wanted to I wanted to get away from the reader, and re in fact, I wanted to get away from the tools, and I wanted to be able to just read the my New Testament without any aids whatsoever. And uh, your program was is just perfect for that step where I'm at right now. Right. So it's really more about the development of your knowledge or your skill with the language, rather than anything specific about Queen A that you gain from the program itself. True. Yeah. The the transition from Attic to Koine is is relatively straightforward, not too too bad. There's some spelling differences between words. There's some, you know, simplification of forms. Um, you got to relearn some glosses of words that you already know, but it's it's not too bad. Um, but uh, but you know, I, I've never been you know disciplined to enough to sit down and just 
memorize all of the vocabulary and work on all the forms. And plus, there's certainly some 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 things that you know that I I didn't really uh, cover as well as I should when I was learning Attic Greek. That a refresher is very helpful for, and um, the 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 fresh perspective, the way that we teach it in Biblical Greek, is very helpful. And so I appreciate all of those things. Huh. So unpack that for me. The way it's taught in Biblical Greek. What do you mean? By that, how is it different to Attic Greek? Um, oh gosh. Uh, so, uh, I, in a way, I was kind of taught old school. Um, not although I learned not that too many years ago, but um, we're moving away from things like deponency now, and um, we're moving away from uh, from this idea that you know you got to memorize principal parts. Um, this is and so Greek or in Koine. In 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 Attic Greek, well, in in both really, but the way the way that I learned it was uh, very you know sort of the old style, the old school style, so and with, with um, potency and with those sorts of things. So using a grammar translate method. Yes, using a grammar translate method exactly. Yeah, cool. Okay, so so really then the it's really more of, I guess in that sense you, what you're saying is that the way you learn, well, the way people have been learning Attic Greek, and the way and I guess the research that's going into Koine Greek is now starting to inform Attic Greek rather than the other way around. Is that what you're sort of getting at? Uh, yeah, it does seem like that to a certain degree. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. And have you found, um, what have you found to be one of the most beneficial elements of sort of going from Attic to Koine? Uh, what, what's been helpful for you in that sense? Well, I should, I should be clear up front and say that I'm not, you know, I'm not um, an elitist on the subject, and I, I don't. I don't feel like if you're interested in biblical Greek, you need to start with biblical. Uh, you need to start with Attic to get that background. Um, you know, I, I, we've got. If you're just talking about Attic Greek and the 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 full flowering of um, of Attic Greek uh, uh, literature, there's a good five centuries in between that and uh, and New Testament Greek, and so for somebody to come in and say, well, you need to start with Attic is about like saying somebody who wants to learn modern English as a spoken language, well, you need to go back and work on Shakespearean English. I, so I, I, from that perspective, I want to make, make it clear. I don't, I don't feel like that's, that's a necessary step. Um, but that, that said, there's some advantages to uh, having a background in Greek, uh, in Attic Greek and, and being able to read some of those, those uh, classical Greek writers. Uh, it, it helps in a in a couple of different ways. For for example, you you get kind of a better perspective on the the culture that uh, the New Testament authors are stepping into and the kinds of issues that they're they're facing. And for example, in in Acts, uh, when Paul is in the Areopagus and he's uh, trying to uh, trying to explain the gospel to the Greeks. And their stumbling block for them was the resurrection. Well, it's it's you know if you don't have that background, it's it's difficult to um, to understand why that was such a hangup for them. So that those kinds of things are helpful. It, it's also you know helpful understanding their culture. So th those sorts of things. Right. Okay. So that's that's really cool. So what would you say then to somebody who's who has got that maximalist kind of? I'm not sure that's the right word, but that kind of as you mentioned elitist kind of you should learn attic to learn all the greek what, what how would you i mean would what would your argument be against that if anything well i think uh just what i said you know if we've got great grammars for for biblical greek i mean really outstanding grammars and so if your your focus is on learning the new testament uh then why would you force yourself to sit down and, and work through texts that you're not really interested in, whereas the grammars that we've got for the New Testament are, are gearing you specifically for um, getting into the text as quickly as possible. Uh, that, to me, is a really compelling argument. Now, if you want that background of, you know, of, of the, the Attic Greek and the Classical Greek, by all means, you know, uh, work through Attic Greek too. But um, if your main focus is biblical Greek, why? You know, why start with that? Mm -hmm. And just because you start with uh, biblical Greek, if you want to expand that knowledge later, 
there are avenues uh, that you can go down to to achieve that. I mean, it's it's true to say that it's a little harder uh, going from coin A back to attic. There's some things that you get used to, um, but the concepts that you learn are still applicable. The forms are still, with very few exceptions, the same. I mean, uh, it's it's just take, uh, sort of taking it to an extra step of complexity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I think that's a, it's a good response. So, yeah. Is there anything else that you would that you would add to this discussion of, you know, should I learn Attic Greek? I guess direction from there. Actually, here's a question for you. Was there any limit in Attic Greek that you hit when you were, you know, that, that, because it seems to me that if you're joining a program like the Greek Mastery Membership, that there was something missing from the Attic Greek world. I don't know, maybe it was just entrance into Koine. I don't know, but I'm interested just to, if, there, if you have any views on that. The, the limit was really, um, a wanting to focus specifically on uh, on biblical literature mm-hmm. and wanting to uh, wanting to focus my attention and my energies on that, and that's where your program I think is really perfect. It gives you you know it, it forces me to review that grammar, make sure I'm not missing anything. It forces me to uh, to to learn all the vocabulary words, so I'm not just using tools or not just using. Um, you know, uh, even text-based helps to in order to get to get to the the heart of the text, um, and so I don't I don't other, you know other than that that discipline of of forcing yourself to to get there I don't I don't think I necessarily hit any ceilings in in the Attic Greek teaching process uh, if that's what you're asking, but um, you know the value that you add with your program is is really beneficial. Right, and the other thing I guess is which is I think key goes back to what you said before is what are you really trying to achieve right do you want to read the new testament or do you want to be able to read all ancient greek right right that's the fundamental question and for my heart my desire is for the for the most part we should be looking you know my encouragement to people is if you want to know the bible there's no better way to do that than learn the greek of the new testament and for that you don't have to go and learn attic greek first Really, you can start with Koine, and if you really want to later on, you can get into Attic or move further into modern Greek or from any direction from there, and you'll get a lot of the same concepts and so on, right? Right, and you know, and 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 again, if you're, I mean, if you're interested in taking that extra step, uh, if you start out with Biblical Greek and you want to go down the path of getting some additional background and reading additional authors, um, by all means, there's paths that you can go down to to get there. Um, but but really, uh, you know, our heart should be in the text of the Bible because that's where our you know Jesus is where our hope is found. And if if we're um, if we're just trying approaching it from head knowledge and just go, going down this path for it you know, so we can be puffed up, um, then we've we've missed the we've missed the the heart of the message of Christianity. Yes, I love that. That is a great that is a great quote. No, I appreciate that. Thanks, Ken. Is there anything else you you think is worth sort of mentioning on this subject? Western civilization. So, uh, so, so classical Greek literature is worth reading, even if you're not necessarily interested in uh, studying the Bible itself. And the reason why is because there's, there's two pillars that hold up Western civilization, right? One is the, Ju- the Judeo-Christian worldview, uh, um, uh, values, you know, religion, etc., and the other is the Greco-Roman um, philosophy, their science, their their way of approaching problems, and those two things hold Western civilization up. Um, but the problem with these two is they are not compatible with each other fully. They are related to each other, but they're not compatible fully. Um, and there, uh, there is, uh, you, as a Christian, I think sometimes we accidentally look at one pillar and assume it's part of the other pillar. And I think it's, there's, there's, there's value in thinking through, are we really just looking at this, uh, as, as if these are inseparable parts? Or are we separating out what is, it's not to say that there isn't value in Greco- Greco-Roman philosophy. Certainly there is, but that should be secondary for a Christian, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's where a book like um, from Plato to Christ, uh, from Plato to Christ, uh, 
helps helps sort of see the dis, you know the overlaps and the distinctions as well. Um, so in that sense, it's a helpful book for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of books would you recommend if people did want to go back into Attic Greek? Uh, well, I mean, it ranges all over the place, but definitely, uh, definitely, I would play. I would say Plato. Um, and I would say directly reading the text themselves after they've done Koine Greek. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plato is, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, there's so much in the new Testament that interacts with, uh, things that you find in Plato, uh, where, um, Paul and other authors have to step in and, and, and refer to things that the, his audience already knows in Plato and then uh, correct that or, or say, well, this is, this is a, a correct view, but yet this is how it really plays out in Christ, those sorts of things. Um, but in addition to that, you know, there are certainly other um, authors that are interesting. Uh, Josephus has some very interesting to, interesting things to say that is worth sitting down and and, um, and comparing, especially as it compares to what's happening in the Gospels and in Acts. Mm. Um, Philo, uh, I think, is worth looking into. Um, but but additionally than, than that, you know, even such things as the um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, which you know, to the classical Greek community by by New Testament times, this was not quite as true as it had been in fifth century BC Athens, but, but, um, but, you know, the, the, uh, uh, Iliad and the Odyssey was the book, the books that anybody who knew anything, uh, would look to for wisdom and advice. Uh, it's not a Bible. It's, it wasn't a Bible to them. They didn't have that, that concept, but they certainly had this um, this idea that there's some wisdom to be found there, and this, these are teaching you principles for life, not dissimilar from the way that that we use the Bible sometimes. And so, um, understanding their worldview and what examples they were looking back to is very helpful. Um, you know, I um, uh, you know I I always uh, uh, think back to the Lord's Prayer. Uh, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And, um, and, and you think of that, that our God is uh, higher than the highest heaven. He is, uh, he is uh, absolutely transcendent. He, he's all knowing, all powerful. And yet he cares for us on an individual basis. And we have a personal relationship with him. And to contrast that with the pagan worldview that you see in the Iliad and the Odyssey, and especially some of the scenes with, where the gods are bickering amongst themselves. And um, I mean, what a contrast that is, that the, the, the gods in, in, in those contexts, they just come up as, as petty and um, bickering amongst themselves and arguing. And, you know, you, to, to see how Christianity is so different from that worldview uh, is, is really interesting and transcendent yeah yeah i think that's a really good point and there is a lot of a lot of distinctions I, I really like the idea of um going to someone like plato as well we just read recently um from plato to christ in the membership of the reading academy which is a really good understanding it gives you a good overview of like uh you know who who you know what plato wrote what his thoughts were those kinds of things and then helps you to sort of go back and sort of uh look at how the basically on the one hand, how that prepared the world, the Greco-Roman world for the Christian worldview, but then also, well, for the gospel rather. And then on the other hand, how the work of Plato flows out through church history as well. So that's a helpful book and I'll leave a link in the comment in the description below for that. But um, yeah, that's really helpful. What else would you say to somebody who's like on the fence of, I should learn Attic, I should, maybe I should learn Koine, but I really want to learn the Bible. What, uh, what final encouragement would you give them? I guess the the one thing that is is worth adding um, and worth uh, worth pointing out is that uh, to whatever level you devote your study of the of the New Testament, uh, that uh, you know some people read their Bible in English and that's or their native language and that's that's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and we can certainly get value out of that. But to those who take the extra step. To sit down and and um, learn the the Bible in its original languages, both Hebrew and Greek, there are uh, there's there's a layer underneath that is worth uncovering, and that will bring 
bring the Bible to life and bring God's word to life in a way that you can't see through simple translation. Mm. Um, that's not to say that you have to do that, that everybody should uh, be have it as their ambition to do that. But for those who just love God's word and want to study God's word, uh, it's there's such a richness and a depth of meaning that that we can grasp when we do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I think that's good encouragement. If you really do want to go deeper, if you want to study the text and you want to understand it as it was originally written, I think that, you know, obviously, I believe this. Now, you know, reading it in the original language is just a whole different experience to reading it in the translation. So that's awesome. Thanks, Ken. So what did you think of that? Have you learned or taught about learning Koine Greek? or Attic Greek for that matter, and if so, which one of those did you learn first? And have you tried going between them? And if so, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you there. And if you're interested in learning Biblical Greek and you want to learn to read the New Testament and you want to grow and develop in that heart for Christ by reading the text in the original languages, then go to bma.to slash starter pack and download your free starter pack today to get started on the journey. If you're interested in more information, that's the place to go. Until the next video then, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you then. Keep taking small, consistent steps toward mastery. I'll see you then.